Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another Cutso.com produced video. This one is how to assemble your Juki DDL8700. Open the box that contains the motor and the sewing head. Remove the items. It will arrive in a couple of boxes, just like what you're seeing here on the screen. Now this video is about an hour long. We cut it down where we could just to shave off the mundane parts. This box is going to contain all the stand parts. Now it took our technician about 90 minutes to put it together. And that's usually what it takes to assemble this machine if you're a sewing machine mechanic. Now if you're a novice, this assembly could take up to five hours. Uh, if you're pretty handy, probably knock it out in just a couple hours. And of course, if you're a sewing machine tech, around 90 minutes would be expected. So this video covers from soup to nuts, how to do the entire thing step by step. And it's covered in about eight sections. So we start out with unpacking and we'll finish with uh, using the machine, you know, putting some thread in it, uh, threading the needle, all that good stuff. So... Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more great videos on how to work with your industrial sewing equipment. Remove the cardboard and you'll find the tabletop. Seven, eight open box in wrenches. Half inch ratchet. 17 millimeter open box in wrench. A 10 millimeter ratchet. 10 millimeter open box in wrench. A small hammer. A pair of scissors. 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter socket. A drill driver with a quarter inch magnetic socket. A 13 and a 14 millimeter open and boxed in wrench. Miscellaneous hardware for the table, a Phillips head screwdriver, and that should be the complement of tools. Then you'll grab the uh, legs, grab your packet of hardware. Okay, you're going to have four bolts with a 7 8 head on it. Gonna want a lock washer next to the bolt head, then the flat washer next to the leg. On the inside, you're going to have a retainer clip that goes over the bolt, and the nut goes over the bolt, and the retainer clip will lock the nut into place. Okay, sit your legs upright. You're going to have two anchors on each side. 
that you're going to put a one inch long 5 16 bolt in with a lock washer Lock washer always goes next to the bolt head. Gonna grab your ratchet with a half inch socket. Next thing you're going to grab is your bottom brace. This also holds your uh, uh, pedal that activates the motor. You have two sets of slots in the top. You're going to go on the front side of the slot. And then move it all the way to the back of the front slot. There are four carriage bolts, washers, and nuts. Tighten them down. Next thing you're going to install is the rear brace. You're going to have four bolts, washers, and nuts. They go in the two diagonally spaced holes on the back of the legs. A carriage bolt will have a smooth top. Those go here. Regular bolts will have a hexagonal head. Next thing you're going to want to do is to open the motor box. In the top of the motor box you're going to have the pulley cover, an extra set of brushes, an extra fuse, and the mounting hardware. Then you will have the motor. Discard the box. This is your servo motor. You have a 110 volt plug in the back for a light. The power cord plugs into a regular house socket. The on-off switch for the fuse. And the speed control. Speed control faces the front of the machine. You also have a motor direction switch. In this case, with the DDL 8700, you do not have to touch it. Leave it where it's at. Oh.
Okay, you're gonna have extra hardware that is not in with this motor to make it easier to mount. You've got 5 16 bolts that are gonna go into these three slots and into these three anchors. You're also gonna have rubber mounts that would just help with vibration control. Again, lock washer goes next to the bolt head, flat washer, and then you're gonna put the rubber mount on. You're gonna put a small end here up toward the bolt head as such. It is easier to go ahead and put the uh, back two mounts in the anchors, slide the motor in from the side, make sure the washers are on top of the motor frame, then put the third one in. Okay, the motor has adjustment left and right. You're going to want to line the center of this pulley up with the center of this slot. That's where your belt is going to go. When you tighten the bolts down, tighten them down just enough to flatten the lock washer. You don't have to smash the rubber vibration belt all the way down. Okay, you're going to grab your operating pedal. It is going to mount to the bottom brace. Got another set of hardware for that. On the angle brackets, you're going to insert a plastic bushing. Very important. It'll help the pedal to run uh, to operate smoothly. You're going to take one of the uh, bolts, put it into the slot, put a washer over it. Put a nut on it to hold it. You're going to come over two and a half sections. Each section consists of the box that it forms. So here's one, two. You're going to skip the first part of the third box and go to the second half. Slide the hinge pin into the bushing. The other one will just line up where it lines up. This will line the pedal up approximately in the center of where the needle is going to be on the machine. 
so when you're sitting at the machine and operating it, you've got a good field of view of your work. Make sure you tighten all the nuts. The next thing you're going to want to do is add the piece that will connect the treadle rod from the pedal to the motor activation switch. You've got a small bolt and a washer. The washer goes on the outside, which is right here. And the nut goes on the inside. connector piece will slide back and forth to get it as close to vertical with this as you can get it. There can be an angle if there needs to be. This piece right here is your treadle rod. Fairly self-explanatory. You've got a mounting hole right here. You're going to put a nut on one side, a washer and a nut on the other side. This is a 12 millimeter open box in wrench. It will loosen the adjustment screws so you can set the angle of your pedal. You just loosen this bolt right here and these two rods will slide. If you do not have a full complement of metric wrenches, a small adjustable will do just fine. Once the treadle rod is attached, you will move the mounting plate here left and right to try and get it as straight up and down as you can. Like I said earlier, if there's a slight angle on it, it will not hurt anything. In your kit, we're going to put some small hex head sheet metal screws that will also go into this table top. They will be holding the switch down on these tabs. These are hold down clips for your uh, cord. It just keeps it from hanging down and getting into your way or getting into the belt.
Okay, all he's doing right here is just putting the cord up just to keep it out of the way. When you're using your machine, you will probably have this off. It plugs into standard 110 outlet in your home. Next thing we're going to do is put the belt onto the pulley and install the pulley guard. You need to loosen the belt adjustment nuts on the motor so you have a range of motion here. This is going to loosen the belt. As you bring it this way, it'll tighten it. So you want it loose. Belt's going to go over the pulley and down through the slide. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver for this. Just put the belt on the pulley and down through the slide. Put your pulley guard on. You're going to have slots in your pulley guard and you're going to have three screw holes. There are three brass colored Phillips head screws. Install those. Usually a good place to put them is in the center of the slot. If for some reason your belt is rubbing against this pulley guard, you can loosen them up and rotate it a little bit till it's out of the way. All right. So now you need to turn your table over. If you're working from the floor, just have somebody help you flip it over and set it upright on the legs. The next thing you're going to want to do is to open the box that contains the sewing head. That is your thread stand and all the accessories to it and the mounting hardware for it. That is your knee lift. Um, this is your stop for your machine. This little piece right here actually goes inside this piece right here. So when you operate your knee lift, it'll lift your foot up. This is your bobbin winder. That is your head mount and hinge pads and hinges. For you can delay, allow you to tilt the head back. Occasionally, these little rubber things will fall off during shipping. Just put them back in their holes. They will be in the box. And that is your machine cover and a pulley, your hand wheel. And it even comes with your oil. Inside the insulation hardware for the head, you're going to find two hinge pads and the hinge that was in it. And then you're going to find the front bumpers for the machine to set on. You're also going to find a little bag with some small nails in it.
Okay, the hinge pads go into the cutouts. You're going to need the nails. Joel here has strong fingers and can start the nail with his fingers and then start to hammer it in. You can also hold the nail with a pair of needle nose, get your fingers out of the way, and you can use a small bolt to get it down in there if you don't have a ball peen hammer. Okay, now on the front side, you have a black rubber pad that goes down into the bottom. And then your gray pad goes on top of it. Then you need a nail. Just make sure that nail goes into the wood. Now you need the nail on the top right here because sometimes the machine will go in and this will want to pull in. Okay, once you have the pads in, you can drop in the oil pan. And on the oil pan, there's a black screw right here. If you ever need to drain the oil out, it goes toward the belt. All right, that's the plunger that will activate when you use your knee lift. When you activate the knee lift, this will come up. It'll push a lever up under the machine. Your foot will raise up. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is to get the head out of the box. The head has some weight to it. You may need some help. Please save the box and all packing until you make sure the machine is running as it should be. This is your pulley guard. Okay. The hinge pins. We have holes in the back. So you want the farthest holes. A little card on the pressure adjustment for your foot is your serial number. Set the head down into the hole and just press the hinges down into the hinge pads. Do not be concerned if there's oil on the machine. They do that when they pack it. 
And make sure when you first start it up that it'll run smoothly. Next thing you want to do is install your hand wheel pulley. There is a flat spot on the shaft. And there are two screws on the pulley. You want the first screw as the hand wheel turns towards you. If you're looking at it from the side, counterclockwise to line up with that flat spot. If you'll notice right here, the one he's tightening up, it is the first screw that's going to come to him when the hand wheel is turning toward him. Here's the second screw. Once that screw is tightened, you tighten the second screw. And what you're going to want is right here, this is going to be flush. You don't want to cram this hand wheel all the way back. It'll lock up. You want a gap here. It will turn smooth with the gap. Tilt your head back, put the belt on, tilt the head back forward. Okay, the motor is still loose down below. It is, the belt's not tight. If I was leaning this head back, you'd see the motor drop. We'll do that at the end. But if you'll notice right now, the belt is approximately in the center of the slot. This is the back belt guard. This is the pulley guard, which also covers part of the belt. And that's the mounting hardware. This little thing right here is just a beauty piece. It makes it look nice. It just snaps in and out. This is your bobbin winder. You line up the drive wheel on the bobbin winder onto the belt. Make sure it is straight. You will have some more sheet metal screws in your kit. And you're going to put them in the center of these slots. Just one in each. That way you have adjustment in and out. this is going to do when you push it in is it's going to contact this belt when this belt is tight. This will turn until your bobbin fills up and then it'll kick out. It'll hit the stop in the back. Your bobbin will, will stop filling up. So you can put a bobbin on and sew and have the bobbin filling up while you're sewing. Okay, there is an extension, it goes on the back of the machine, well, on the side of the machine toward the back, excuse me. Put that in and there is a slot in it on, on the end of it, please tighten it down. Okay. 
and you got to work around the belt a little bit, but that will cover the whole thing. There's a small black screw and a washer. It actually goes into that extension that you just put on. Now there are two bigger screws. The other one goes on the front side. Beauty trim back on, makes it look nice. And then this back part is adjustable. You're going to have two more sheet metal screws. Get them about the center of the two slots, that way you have some adjustment. Okay, now this is your head stop for when you tilt it back. Just push it all the way down into the table. Okay, this is your thread guide. you want to do here is this disc you want to line it up to where it's in line with this thread guide don't get too rambunctious with putting it in there's actually a little line on this you want to take it down to there and it will not come out it's, a, it's held in with friction when you go to thread it your thread's going to go through the bottom Come up and over between the two discs, go into here, loop around, go into the bottom hole, then come down to your tension assembly. totally adjustable you can adjust the pad up and down on the shaft here you can adjust the angle of it and you can adjust how far this goes in and out right here Okay, as you move your knee, the foot's going to go up and down.
doing here is tightening the belt up. You're going to turn the top nut to bring the motor down, which will put tension on the belt. And then you will lock it in place for the bottom nut. Putting the light on is very simple. It's a magnetic base. Aim it where you need it. Okay, this is an inch and three eighths. There's a paddle bit. Now there are two ways to do the light. One is you can drill a hole right here. This is what we normally do. It's a little neater. The other way is you can just bring it around and plug it into the motor. The other way is to just bring it around and plug it in. Personal preference. This is the way we do it. It's neater if people have a lot of machines. This hole is going to be for the thread stand. Now the light switch on the light, if you like it on all the time when you're working, just leave it on. When you turn the machine off, the light will go off. So power to the machine, power off the machine. Now what you're going to want to do we don't do it here because we usually ship these machines out to a company. We don't put the oil in the pan. But at this point in time, you're going to tilt your head back. You're going to take your oil bottle. You're going to open it up. You're going to pour it right in here. As long as it's no higher than the high level and in between these two lines, you don't want it to get down to low or below that. This pump will submerge into the oil and when you run your machine, it'll self-oil.
thread stand comes with everything you need to put it together and attach it to the table. You'll notice this one only has the holes in the side. It goes into the top piece. The bottom piece is going to have the mounting hardware to attach it to the table. That's where you put your thread spools. going to have three holes for the uh, holders for the thread. Skip the one in the middle, otherwise your threads are going to bump into each other. The reason you have two places for threads, one of them can be your bobbin, the other one's the one you sew with. Slide the plastic dish on first, then the foam pad, then put your uh, spool holders on. This piece will slide onto the bottom part. You don't want to slide it all the way down, you want to keep it up toward the top, but you got to have enough room put the connecting piece on the top and bottom. When you tighten that down, that piece will pinch the top mast and the bottom mast and hold it together. Okay, you're going to have two washers that are metal and two that are neoprene. Then from the bottom you put the neoprene on so it's touching the table. The metal one goes on below that and then the nut. When you put this on just take an adjustable wrench, tighten that nut down and this won't move on you. Put the thread on the thread stand. From the back of the thread stand, push your thread through the eyelet. Go into the bottom hole of the thread guide. Bring your thread up and around and into the tension discs. Go straight into the thread guide. Get into the bottom hole. Then straight down. Pull your thread through the tension disc. Come around the tension disc, go to the back side and pull it through the spring. Follow your thread guides on up. Go into the take-up eyelet. Come down through the thread guide on the other side. Down to the needle bar thread guide. There's a thread guide right on top of the needle. Go through that.
position your needle and thread the needle from left to right. Thread through, your machine is threaded. Take your bobbin and insert it into the bobbin case. Bring the thread around and through the side guide, up under the tension spring. And make sure you leave a tail hanging out. It's not possible. We drill the hole ourselves. And we've been doing this for a long time. Like I said, I've been doing this for a while. Tilt your head back. Insert the bobbin case into the hook basket. Push. It will click into place. The bobbin is ready to go. Once the machine is threaded and you make sure you have a bobbin in it that has thread on it. You can run the machine. You have a speed control on the front of the motor. When the knob is turned all the way counterclockwise and you cannot turn it anymore, that is as fast as the machine will go. As you start to turn it clockwise, like you're turning up a volume control, you're going to hear a click. And as you continue to turn, your motor will slow down. When you turn it all the way clockwise, you can't turn it anymore, your motor will not run. The best way to set the machine when you first get it is turn it till the motor is not running and start backing it up with your foot on the pedal. The machine will slowly start to turn and as it turns, turn it up till you're comfortable with the speed and just leave it there. As you become more comfortable with the machine, you can turn it more counterclockwise to get more speed out of it. When you hear the click, that's as fast as it'll go. This knob here on the right hand of the machine controls your stitch length. There's a little dot right above the center of this knob that corresponds to these numbers. As you turn the knob to a smaller number lining up with your indicator, your stitch length is going to get shorter. As you turn toward a larger number, your stitch length will lengthen out. Below that, on this lever right here, this controls your back tack. As you're sewing, when you push this lever down, it is going to back your fabric up, but still stitch. Normally what you would do is you would sew about four stitches, push the lever down, sew about four stitches again, backing up, then let go and sew your length. What that's going to do is lock your stitch in at the beginning, and if you do the same thing at the end of your run, it'll lock your stitch in at the, at the end. As you can see, you have two very different stitch lengths. Smaller stitch length here, longer stitch length here. 
Thanks for watching this Cutso.com video on how to assemble your Juki DDL 8700. Subscribe to our YouTube channel now and make sure to catch all our videos.